Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I want to thank all of you for your good comments. Uh, like I say before, and I'll say it again, that uh, I learn a lot because from everybody's comments, uh, you know, uh, everybody spends time doing research and uh, they like to share and, you know, keep everybody informed and, you know, found out I was uh, partly right on something and partly wrong. Uh, this is going to cover a variety of subjects, so, you know, please don't be, um, you know, just think this is the same old thing. No. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, when they talked about... Uh, NASA, N-A-S-A. -S -S now, they're spelling this stuff with, uh, you know, phonetic spelling. Uh, N-A-S-A, -S -S Hebrew word in the Strong's 5375. It means to bear up, to lift. And people were saying, oh, no, that means to deceive. Um, you know what? The root word for NASA does mean that. So there's like several words that are connected to this word, uh, like uh, loom, or illuminate, or lumen. Uh, lumen is a measurement of light. Illuminate means to make something have uh, brightness. Uh, you know, it, there's a root word, and then there's applications to it. So let's take a look at a few things. Okay, so NASA means to lift up or the bear up. Okay. And uh, there's another, okay, that's uh, root word 5375. But if you look up word, Hebrew word 5377, it's Nasha, N-A-S-H-A, -S same word but just with an H in it, it means to be beguiled. Now, what's interesting about beguiled, beguiled has a number of meanings. And the, now, by, all, by no means do I believe in this Mandela effect garbage. Uh, you might remember preachers using the wrong thing and, and you know, from times past, for example, they say, oh, yeah, the lion and the lamb. And now the Bible says the wolf and the lamb. Now, the lion and the lamb was a song that Elvis uh, made famous on Ed Sullivan. And then the pastors started using that. That's probably what we remember. But you got to realize something. The publishers are all owned by the kids, the devil's children, all of them that I know of. I can't, I, I've investigated almost every major publisher, anybody that's somebody and anybody. They're owned by the devil's kids. Uh, Rupert Murdoch of Fox, his, uh, the Fox TV network, uh, they own HarperCollins that prints gay porn and the Church of Satan's materials, the Satanic Bible by Anton Levy. Oh, they call him LeVay, but his real name was Levy. Just like uh, Mordecai Levy, also known as Karl Marx, from a long line of Talmudic rabbis. Oh, yeah. And, uh, of course, they'll try to tell you his name was Howard Stanton, but that's not, no, no, ha Levy. But, uh, so HarperCollins prints Satanic, the Church of Satan Bible, from the Church of Satan. They print gay porn. Well, they own Zondervan, which is the largest printer of Bibles in the English-speaking word world. And I had an, uh, a Strong's Concordance, which is a Strong's, well, a concordance, for those of you that don't know it, a concordance, you can look up every single word in the Bible. Like if you know a phrase, 
And you know what the words are? You can look it up in Strong's Concordance. It'll tell you what verse it's in, and then it'll tell you uh, the word meanings. So it's got a Hebrew and a Greek dictionary, and it used to be pretty decent. Um, but the thing is, I had an, a Strong's from, a, I bought one in 1990 when I first started um, coming to the Lord and wanted some research materials. And I think the print date was around 88, 1988 or so. When you looked at the word Adam, you know, Adam and Eve, it was uh, Hebrew words 119, 120, and 121, and I think 122 also. It was a racial description. Well, guess what? The modern Strong's just says, oh, pff, the first man. The, 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 the ruddy, the description about being ruddy, gone. Gone. Uh, when you looked at the word beguiled in the Strong's, oh, it had some very interesting uh, definitions. As in Eve saying to the Lord, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Well, like I said, it's from the same root word as 5375, NASA, which means to bear up, to lift, you know, like lift off, NASA. And yes, I know they got a serpent's tongue as one of the, the part of their symbolism. Why doesn't that surprise me? And we're going to get there. Guess what? One of the root words is uh, uh, has reference to serpent. <laughs> yeah, doesn't surprise me. But uh, the word beguiled is nasha, N-A-S-H-A. And beguiled had uh, a number of meanings. Uh, to trick, to delude, to deceive, to impose upon by artifice or by craft. Is that witchcraft? Huh. And uh, by to trick by amusement, uh, misled by strategy. It also uh, can mean by to be char uh, charmed or enchantment of somebody in an in a deceptive way. So it means to lead astray mentally to delude or morally to seduce. And when you uh, so it means deceive greatly, totally, and utterly. When you look at that word to seduce, it could mean in the spiritual sense, in the mental sense, or in the physical sense. Seduce. I mean, you know, um, you want let, allow me to use it in a sentence. The handsome, rich young man beguiled the pretty young girl with the promise of marriage. What do you think that means? Yeah. That has been removed from the modern Strong's. My 88 Strong's had it. I remember because I did a lot of studying. I did a lot of word studies back in the 80s. A lot. I had my nose buried in that Strong's a lot of times. Looking up words. Uh, but all the modern definitions in the new modern Strong's, they're gone. They're, they've been changed. No, like I say, it's not the Mandela effect. Sorry. So, uh, let's see. What else? Now, the, uh, let's see. Let's take a look at another one. Another word that has reference to Nasa, Nasha. It's a uh, Hebrew root word, 5172. Uh, that word is translated as serpent. Okay? Sometimes an actual snake. Sometimes a mythological beast or figure of speech. Serpent. Snake. Translated in the following manner. Enchantment. Divine. Enchanter. To learn by experience. To diligently observe. Now remember... Uh, what does a Revelation 12 say? Now, that's a thing. The Greek and the Hebrew, they match each other. I, you know, I would say that I'm amazed, but I'm really not. I mean, the Hebrew and the Greek 
share so many similarities. It's just mind-boggling to the unbeliever. All right, contrast uh, Revelation 3, where, you know, Eve's talking to the serpent, right? Contrast that with this, Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. I mean, you look at the word devil. What is that? It's, it's evil with a capital D in the front. And a great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Ah, okay. So, let's go back. So, you know, when you're talking about, uh, you know, serpent, you know, enchantment, divine, enchanter, to learn by experience. How did he learn by experience? By watching us. To diligently observe. Yeah, the devil and Satan has been looking and watching us for a long time. He knows our weak points. Boy, he knows mine. Uh, let's see. Hold on here. Let's let me make another point. All right. So uh, in John eight forty four, when Jesus was talking to a certain group of people, and said, "Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do." He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. So, he's calling them the devil, and they say there's no truth in him, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, ah, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Huh. Isn't that what we just uh, pretty much had been reading here to deceive oh yeah now there's another interesting thing in 5377 uh, NASHA Nasha in addition to being led astray to delude to seduce beguile deceive greatly and totally and utterly the next word NASHA 5878, the very next word that has the same root, has the idea of to lend with interest, usury, for debt, the giver of usury. Huh, what do the devil's children do for to make money? Well, to support themselves. Aren't they into Usury? There's a saying. Give a man a gun and he can rob a bank. Give a man a bank and he can rob the world. And guess what? Uh, you know, so when I said NASA meant to lift up and to bear, you know, bear up, I was right. But when I, everybody started pointing out all the other words, uh, I was like, oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't study this out. Because when I first read that NASA meant uh, to deceive, uh, little did I, you know, I, I thought the devil's kids had put that out there, giving us the wrong word to make us look like fools. So I didn't go any further, but all you guys and gals gave me the, um, the other roots, and yeah, you were right, sure enough. I had to buy another... Uh, I had to buy another uh, Strong's Concordance because uh, somebody got mine and never returned it. That's what, you know, no good deed goes unpunished, I guess. All right, well, um, you know, another thing we should uh, consider. Remember Washington is called the District of Columbia? Do you know what Columbia is? Oh, yeah, I know what that is. That's a country down in South America. Well, that's what they call that land area. Yeah, there is a land area that they call Colombia. But do you know who Colombia is? 
It's a name. It's a noun. Columbia is another name for the goddess, also known as Easter and Isis and Ishtar. Uh, she goes by Diana, uh, Aphrodite, whatever, you know, she's got a ton of names. Uh, the she kinda. Oh, yeah, the she kinda, which the you know who's want to make you believe is the uh, wife of God the Father, the Holy Spirit. And then uh, they did something and then had Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, so either they're right or my King James Bible's wrong because the King James Bible says the Holy Spirit and refers to him as he or him. He shall lead you into all truth. Yeah, so one of them's wrong and one of them's right and I know who it is and I hope you do too. Now, there's another one. Let's take a look at some wisdom of the you-know-whos. Now, the, uh, like I said, the publishers are all bought up and they've changed everything. Uh, you know, what's a unicorn? A unicorn is an Asian rhino, not the African, the Asian rhino. He's only got one horn. African rhinos have got two horns. Look it up. Matter of fact, their Latin name is Unicornis, Unicorn is Rhinoceros or Rhinoceros, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Unicornis Rhinoceros or Rhinoceros. Look it up. How did that turn into a, a white horse with a horn sticking out of its head with a, a rainbow pixie dust coming off the backside? I, I don't know how that happened. But uh, all right, well, we're going to take a look at something else. Uh, in Isaiah 34 and verse 14, uh, it's speaking of Babylon being destroyed. If memory serves me correctly, it's speaking of Babylon being destroyed. But I don't want to make this a huge Bible study, so let's just read it. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. Now, what was a satyr? According to Greek mythology, if you want to believe that that's what this is, it was um, a half-man, half-goat um, type of beast. It was a man from the waist up and a goat from the waist down. Sort of like Pan in, um, you know, you've heard of Pan's flute in uh, Greek mythology, perhaps. Well, that would have been a you know, and I wonder how much of that is actual, just plain mythology, or were the fallen angels doing genetical, genetic type experiments back then, and God wiped them out? I, you know, I don't know. It makes you wonder. Or maybe the satyr is something totally, totally different. I, I just don't know. I'll be honest. But, uh, and then you had the centaurs where they had the body of a horse and the from the neck up on the horse was the uh, waist up the head of a man and chest and arms you know it makes you wonder you know i don't know and the minotaur which was a man's body with the head of a bull if i think i'm not 100 percent sure you know uh is there truth to some of this mythology i, I don't know you know but it makes you wonder did they did the fallen angels do these kind of genetic DNA experiments back then? Wouldn't surprise me. Really wouldn't. But I don't know if this satyr is what they're talking about. So, all right, let's read. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow, The screech owl, the screech owl, also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. Now, if you read this verse in context, so, I, you know, if you read the verse before, uh, well, let's read Isaiah 
34 and verse 12. Well, I wasn't planning on it, but let's read the whole chapter of Isaiah 34. It's a small chapter, and, you know, I want to take things in context. Verse 1, Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord. What's indignation? Extreme hatred. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. You're talking wrath, people. And his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcass, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll... Uh, what did Peter say about uh, the heavens being dissolved with fervent heat? The earth, you know, the world being on fire. And, and Revelation talks about the heavens being rolled up like a scroll out of their place and the mountains are removed. Uh, if you want in more in-depth on this, go to my Isaiah playlist and watch Isaiah 34 because I covered this in that and I don't want to go over it all again. Verse 4, And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth from the vine. And the vine was the symbol of Israel. And as a falling fig from the fig tree. The fig tree was a symbol of Judah. Verse 5, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. What was Idumea? Esau, Edom is another name for Idumea. Idumea is another name for Esau and Edom. All right. And my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse. Upon the people of my curse. But Chaplain Bob, God wants everybody to be saved. God doesn't have a curse on these people. Really? Really? Uh, you forget. Esau married into the Hittites, the Canaanites. Yeah. And they were the members, uh, they were the satanic hybrids of the fallen angels with the women. But angels can't have sex. Well, if you say so. Yeah. So, the Lord's sword's going to be bathed in heaven. It's going to come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. And if you think God's people with the, his curse are going to get saved, uh, I don't think so. If you want to believe it, eh, that's up to you. Verse 6, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of the lambs and goats and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorns, there are those unicorns, shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. What's pitch? Tar. And what happens if you take a match to tar? It burns. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched day nor night. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Sounds like hell, doesn't it? But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all our princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be a habitation of dragons." 
a habitation of dragons. Didn't we read in Revelation 12? Dragons, old serpent, the devil, Satan. Oh, yeah. And a court for owls. What do owls do? They're night creatures. They hunt at night. And they're silent. Do you know that uh, an owl, when it's flapping its wings, coming down upon its prey, is silent? You, don't, you can't hear an owl flapping its wings. Science, to this day, he still isn't sure why. And the wild beasts of the desert also shall meet with wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, the screech owl. The screech owl. Keep that in mind. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. That word screech owl there is the word Lilith in Strong's Concordance. Really, it doesn't really have a meaning, but if you go to the you know who ish encyclopedia, they claim that Lilith is the name of a demoness. She was the first wife of Adam, and she didn't like being on the bottom, uh, if you know what I mean, during marital relations. I'm trying not to be crude, but there's no other way that I know how to explain it. So she didn't like being on the bottom, so she's like, well, I want to be on top. Uh, I want to be over you. I want to rule over you. And uh, I guess she didn't like the, the setup, so she took off and became the wife of Samael, uh, which was, some say is Satan, some say it's one of Satan's generals, whatever. She was supposed to be a demoness that would suck the life, breath life out of newborn children. Uh, there's a group of people called Wiccans, uh, which is old older Middle English for witch. Uh, there's another word, Wicca, W-I-C-K-E. You put a D on the end, it's wicked. Um, yeah. And they'll call it the craft. And they'll say, oh, that's wicker. You know, like a wicker basket, W-I-C-K-E-R. But uh, really, it's witchcraft. And... Uh, Wicca is W-I-C-C-A, and if, you know, W-I-C-C-A-N is a Wiccan, Wicca is the craft, and Wiccan is a person, a female that practices the craft, witchcraft, and uh, they, uh, a lot of feminists, like Gloria Steinem, one of the tribe, of course, surprise, right, big surprise, I know, you're shocked, not really. Um, they, uh, a lot of times the feminists and a lot of, uh, I think Stevie Nicks of Fleetwood Mac, if you know who that is, she would dedicate her music to Lilith and all the women of the world. So the witches, uh, took Lilith to be their liberator and, you know, lesbianism. Well, I don't need a man, you know, that kind of thing. And it ties in with Jezebel. Screech Owl. Lilith. What does Bohemian Grove have in their little thing? Uh, an owl. I wonder why they picked an owl. You know, it's amazing how they always pick the satanic stuff from the Bible to make their symbolism. Or is it? Just a coincidence, of course, I'm sure. Verse 15, There shall the great owl make her nest, and lay, and hatch, and gathered under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read, No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate, for thy mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit hath gathered them. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever, from generation to generation shall they dwell therein. So, is it a coincidence that uh, Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, and the nation Columbia, is named after a goddess? The District of Columbia, the goddess. 
Uh, I mean, come on. You know, it's just, it is so in your face. It's just unbelievable to me. And, um, you know, it's hidden in plain sight. If you've got a dictionary and you look up Easter and it just says something about the resurrection of Jesus, if it doesn't say the uh, goddess of spring fertility, take that dictionary and throw it in the garbage because it's worthless. You know, Easter is the name of the goddess of spring fertility. I don't remember if it's Greek or Roman. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. You know, they say that Rome conquered Greece physically, but spiritually Greece conquered Rome because they adopted all their gods. All right, everybody. I want to uh, read a comment. Well, actually, an email somebody gave me. I'm for their protection. I'm not going to read any names or anything. But uh, I thought it was a pretty good comment. And no, I'm not trying to convince anybody to keep the Sabbath or not to keep the Sabbath. I mean, that's between you and the Lord. Uh, it's just that I just generally try, try to set aside one day where I can contemplate and concentrate on the Lord. Uh, in times past, I've been the worst Sabbath keeper because I worked, uh, there were days I worked seven days a week. So, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm the worst Sabbath keeper there is. But uh, actually, I try to keep every day uh, since I've retired. I'm not living on much anymore, but uh, in some ways, I kind of wish I'd have kept working instead of going up to Arkansas where that goat rip, stole, stole me blind. Boy, that was... Uh, and do me a favor, everybody. Pray, pray for me to be... Uh, restored please because uh he absolutely refuses to return anything of mine i even had an attorney an att a lawyer uh write him a letter and he just blew it off because he knows there's not much i can do you know he could have sold everything and just say well you know it was on my property on the outside i, I don't know what happened to it you know i was out grocery shopping and nobody was here and somebody stole it you know, sorry. So, uh, I ask that uh, you pray and may the Lord swiftly judge between me and him. All right, so let me read this uh, comment. I thought it was pretty good. And I do not take credit for this. This was a comment somebody sent me. So, let's, let's get started. I was a history and philosophy student, and how fortunate uh, that the Father allowed me to be filled up by his holy writ before getting into studies. During my years, there was a new Christian accepting the word as truth. I was also given the term Judeo-Christian. Oh, yeah. Judeo-Christian. So it seemed fitting to, take a couple of, fitting to take a couple Jewish study classes with the possibility of a minor in Jewish studies. I learned quickly that Judeo-Christian was an error in thought with the help of the Father, I saw it as an issue mostly because the basic learning introduced me to a new field. Again, I was ignorant. I was ignorant a child accepting milk, trying to gain a deeper understanding. But as I prayed to learn Judaism, I soon realized was not the religion of the ancient Israelites. And to that I say amen to that. Let's continue. And I begin to doubt the claim that the Old Testament was Jewish scripture at all, of which mainstream Christians of all demon nominations, oh, I'm sorry, she wrote denom uh, he or she wrote denominations, say and think. And you pointed out the reality of Judeo-Christian, not, uh, not the case in one of your videos. With this context in mind, I began to search scripture to verify the Sabbath day as it is understood by those who truly love the Father. I am in no way asserting any knowledge concerning this, but my very first question concerning the calendar we follow and the Jewish calendar too, 
And then I asked, how do we know Sunday is the first day of the week and Saturday the seventh? That's a, uh, my comment here. Uh, very good question. And you know what? I'm be I wonder that too. How do we know? I, I really, how do we know? There's a verse in uh, Daniel, which I should have used last night um, on the video, but I didn't. Somebody pointed out the one where uh, uh, the, the where it says the they thought to change times. Oh yeah, let me read that real quick. All right, Daniel seven. Uh, this is my comments, not the one that sent me this email. Daniel seven twenty three. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Now, a lot of people will try to convince you it's the Roman revived empire. I don't think so. It's going to be different, okay? The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse, diverse from all kingdoms. In other words, it's going to be different which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. Noahide laws? And think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, a year, and times, two years, and the dividing of time, a half a year. So one year plus two years and a half a year, three and a half. Uh, that's explained in Revelation where it says, it uses the same exact language about time, times, and a half a times, and then it tells you 42 months. So that explains to you what a time is. A time is a year. I did that in another study, but if you asked me, I couldn't remember which video. You know, after you've done 11, 1,200 videos, it's kind of, kind of hard to remember where everything is. So, you know, give the old guy a break. Alzheimer's setting in, you know. Verse 26, But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. All right, let's get back to the um, thing. This is what they said. I am in no way asserting any knowledge concerning this, but my very first question concerning the calendar we know, and the Jewish calendar too, and then I asked, how do we know that Sunday is the first day of the week and Saturday the seventh? Why is the Lord's Day Saturday for most Christians? I mean, I'm sorry. Why is the Lord's Day Sunday for most Christians? And who spelled Sunday? Why is it S-U-N, as in the sun in the sky? Why isn't it S-O-N, the, the day of the sun? S-O-N, as in father and son? Why isn't it that sun day? Who spelled this? Who? Who? Not me. Wasn't me for sure. Why is the Lord's Day Sunday for most Christians? What I knew for sure was the Sabbath day was important to our Father. And even in the days of Jesus, the Pharisees chastised him for healing a man on the Sabbath and telling him, and telling him to walk. So yeah, Jesus told healed. This is my note. Uh, Jesus told healed the guy. Told him take up your bed and walk. And then the Pharisees, the Jews, were like, what do you think you're doing? You're not allowed to do that. Today's the Sabbath day. Who told you to do that? All right, let's go back to uh, this writing. How then can I understand the Sabbath as the Father wanted us to understand? Being a young Christian and new to this, I do not know, but, under, uh, but understanding is what I am looking for. The first point I did say was that Every day we should be in touch with our Father and His Word as they agreed. In Matthew eleven twenty seven through 30, we read, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, 
Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Very well said, uh, that, you know, quote from uh, the Bible, right? How about Exodus 31, 16 and 17? Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign, a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Mark 2, 27, 28. And he, Jesus, and he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Uh, Matthew 12, 1 through 8. At the time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hungered, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the you-know-who saw it, but you, well, you know, but when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hungered, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. All right, Mark 2, 27. O ye, uh, or have ye not read in the law, how that on the Sabbath days the priests of the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? Oh, yeah. That they might accuse him. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall not have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Oh, Bob's note here. Better not tell that to the animal rights people. Oh no, a sheep is just as good as a man to them. Maybe even better. Uh, how much better... How much, then, is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And as he stretched it forth, it was restored whole, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him, how they might destroy him. You gotta love those religious people. You know, uh, This is Bob's note. You gotta love those religious people. You know, you do good works, and they want to kill you. Oh, yeah. Because they're show, you're showing them up. How come they didn't heal? Because God the Father honored his son. But he didn't ha honor the hypocrites. All right, let's keep reading what this one wrote. Uh, and held a counsel against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Uh, yeah, Mark 2, 27, 28. Um, let's see 
All right, Ezekiel 22, 6 and 8. Uh, Behold, the princes of Israel, everyone were in thee and to their power to shed blood. In thee have they set light by father and mother. In the midst of thee have they dealt by oppression with the stranger. In thee have they vexed the fatherless and the widows. Thou hast despised mine holy things and hast profaned my Sabbaths. Oh, yeah. All right, let's keep reading this comment here. Isaiah 1 and verse uh, 13 through 17. Bring no more vain, what does vain mean? Worthless. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an ab abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment and relieve, relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Oh, yeah. But they don't want that. All right, Genesis 1, 14 through 19. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. Divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to rule the, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we just read Daniel 7, 25. Okay. As we know, the ancient Israelites were a stiff-necked people. Oh, yeah. From a historical perspective, I have learned first, the Hebrew word for moon, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the Hebrew word for moon is month. Huh. Isaiah spoke about their new moons, months, and feasts. In Leviticus, God had seven feasts, but in Judaism they have major and minor feasts such as Purim and Hanukkah. All right, so let's, uh, we're going to read from Esther, the book of Esther 9 and verse 25 through 32. And boy, do the you know who's love their book of Esther. If they didn't love this book so much, you know, if, if, if Jesus came to me and asked me a question and said, uh, Bob, there's one book in the Bible that doesn't belong there. Can you guess which one it is? Do you know which one it is? My guess would have been Esther. Now, I'm not saying Esther doesn't belong in the Bible. I'm not saying I don't believe Esther. But I tell you what, if, if the Lord asked me and said there's a book in the Bible that doesn't belong there, and I had to make a, a guess... That would be my guess. Because boy, I'll tell you what. I can't find where the book of Esther was quoted by anybody else in the Bible. The name of God's not mentioned in Esther. No angels. Jesus never quoted Esther to my knowledge. None of the apostles, none of the prophets. I, you know, and the you-know-whos love this book so much. It's the only book book in the Bible that I'm not, I don't know. I'm not going to say I'm not a hundred, well, I don't know. It probably, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the one to take it out, but I'll tell you what, it's, I wonder. Sometimes I wonder. All right, so let's read Esther. Uh, oh, that was my comments, not the uh, person that sent me this email. But when Esther came before the king, 
Oh, something else before I start reading this. Um, we were reading uh, in my temple series. I was reading from the book of uh, Ezra and Daniel. Well, not all the Jews returned to Jerusalem. Some of them stayed in Babylon, which was taken over by uh, Persia. So it is very possible that this book of Esther is actually legitimate and speaking about actions that happened in that area at that time. Because some of the Jews didn't leave. They didn't go back to Jerusalem. They stayed put. Hey, I got kids. I got a wife. I built this house. I got a crops. I got my vineyard going. You know, 70 years, you could put down a lot of roots. Uh, what do I want to go back to Jerusalem for? There's nothing there. You know, the walls torn down. The houses were all burnt. I mean, that's, you know, I've spent my life trying to build up a, 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 a life here. Why am I just going to walk away from everything and go to Jerusalem and have to start all over from scratch? No, thank you, probably some of them said. So, all right, so Esther was set in the court of the Persian king. All right, so let's read this uh, writing. But when Esther came before the king, she commanded by letters that his wicked device which he devised against the goods should return upon his own head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. Um, wherefore they call these days Purim after the name of Pur, Pur. Therefore, for all the words of this letter and of that which they had seen concerning this matter, which had come unto them, the Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined themselves unto them so as it should not fail that they should keep these two days according to their writing and according to their appointed time every year and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation every family every province and every city and that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews nor the memorial of them perish from their seed then Esther the queen the daughter of Abi Hale and Mordecai, the Jew, wrote with all authority to confirm the second letter of Purim, and he sent the letters unto all the Jews to the hundred twenty and seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, Sarius, I don't know, with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim and their times appointed, according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them, and as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed the matters of the fasting and their cry, and the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book. In other words, uh, Haman was going to, according to this book, Esther, he was going to kill the Jews, and then they, um, Esther got the queen to make a decree that the Jews could kill him and his family and all those that wanted to hurt the Jews. I don't know. All right, uh, back to this one's comment. It appears an ordinance instituted by the Jews for the Jews. I do not get the impression it is of, fa of our father, yet we find groups of people called Hebrew roots turning to these feasts. It seems to be confusion. I explained to blank a person uh, that the most spiritually stunting concept for American Christians is to declare the Old Testament as Jewish scriptures. It is our Father's holy word to his people Israel, and that construct keeps them from reading the whole world. Uh, I'm sorry, the whole, whole word. I further explained a couple things that I know concerning the Gregorian calendar followed by most of the world. First, it was instituted by Pope Gregory the 13th and the 16th century, and it follows the so-called Earth's revolutions around the sun. Uh, Bob's note here. Personally, I believe the universe revolves around the Earth. Uh, there's some evidence for it in Scripture, and I believe that NASA hides this fact because, you know what, if the, if the entire universe revolved around the Earth, Boy, would that prove 
the creator the earth is at the center of the earth uh, of the of the creator's love of the earth and the inhabitants his people on the earth you know what i'm saying instead of the earth going around the sun the sun goes around the earth uh, that would uh now there's people who say you know the earth is uh spinning i kind of believe that because uh have you ever seen water going down a drain you know the water spins when it goes down the drain and like a tornado it always spins in a certain direction and then when you go to the other side of the equator it i've heard and i've never experienced because i've never been on the other the southern equator uh that it spins in the opposite direction but i've had people tell me this and i don't think they're part of some crazy conspiracy i'm sorry i don't believe it but you know so it is possible the earth spins but i think the universe spins around the earth and that would prove without a shadow of a doubt that there is a creator and the earth uh, universe was uh you know if it's revolving around the earth well guess what that would that would prove a creator and show that the earth is the center of his love for the universe but can i prove it no i can't it's just this is just what you know the bob theory and you know what they say about theories it's just an idea until it's proven wrong so maybe one day i'll find out that i was totally wrong but i don't teach this stuff you know because it's you know jesus didn't say believe on me in the flat earth and thou should be saved or believe on me in the round earth or believe on me in the center of the earth and the sun revolves around the earth and you'll be saved no it's just you know jesus so all right so first it was instant uh back to the comment First, it was instituted by Pope Gregory the 13th in the 16th century, and it follows the so-called Earth's revolutions around the sun. Uh, that concerns me when they try to institute the Lord's Day on Sunday or even attempt to name the first day of the week Sunday as the days of the week in the calendar are named after various gods and celestial, celestial worship. When I ventured into the calendar followed by the Jews, I found their calendar a little concerning simply because it was it too was modified by Hillel II or Hillel the Younger in the 3rd century and after rabbinic study officiated by the 10th century. Is not our father the author and creator of times, seasons, and laws? How do they get to make rules in which the Sabbath is on their calendar? Again, I don't claim to know, but there are people who suggest that the father's solar lunar calendar is more accurate in understanding the father's sabbaths and feasts bob's note here um i've seen that too about uh the solar lunar calendar i just don't know enough about it you know i've studied a little bit but i'm not you know i'm not a levitical priest that was trained from the time he was six years old until the time he was 20 you know they know that stuff um but i don't all right back to the comment they suggest that the new moon is the beginning of a tr true new month and that uh and for that month the same day of the week as the new moon falls is on is the sabbath day and count the passover pentecost tabernacles day of atonement feast of unleavened bread and so forth as likely the manner in which our father's feasts were understood if they are correct then we are cho uh, closer than most people realize as you and many of your flock see this as the last mile well i don't know if they're my flock they're uh, bob's note here i don't know if they're my flock but they're they're the lord's flock i'm just one of the lord's teachers that's all i am um see this as the last mile i know we do not know the time or the hour in which jesus returns and uh, no man can know moreover i firmly stand on the idea that having a relationship with our father and savior requires us to get up every single day we are here to check in with our father but the sabbath is also important and i know also fasting and prayer is a necessity in our in our lives fasting and prayer 
is a necessity in our lives. And this is why I am trying to understand the meaning of this matter. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24, 4 and 5. Oh, yeah. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of Man was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, verses 7 and 8. That's right. The devil sinned from the beginning. Um, this verse, Bob's note here, this verse is one of the reasons why one of the reasons why I think that the war in heaven was in time past. Uh, I think the war in heaven happened before Adam and Eve sinned and partook of the tree of good and, uh, good and evil. Because that would make the devil the sinner from the beginning. Because if the war in heaven is later, then that would make uh, Eve the sinner from the beginning. I hope I'm I hope that makes sense you know and plus not only that but uh, God looked at everything on the sixth day and said everything that he had created and it was good so I think Satan fell somewhere between Rev Genesis 2 and verse and chapters chapters 2 and ver uh, chapters 3 somewhere in that time period I don't know I might be wrong it's the Bob theory, you know, Bob doesn't have it all figured out. When I get it all figured out, I'll let you know. But until that time, uh, I'm waiting on Jesus to explain things to me and the Holy Spirit, of course. All righty, uh, back to the comment. Let no man deceive us is woven into the New Testament from which I gather to be the name of the name of the game in these last days. And as the scriptures tell us uh, to keep the Sabbath, there is spiritual fruit from this and growth for us in this command. There are just thoughts that have come to my heart. And uh, someone asked if I would share these thoughts and things in my heart. And I just want to thank you and the Father for all the spiritual food I've gained in these dark days. And Bob says, all glory to Jesus. Uh, back to the comment. May the Lord... Our God, keep us from temptation on these last days and deliver us from evil. Help us grow in truth, giving us his spirit that we may stand for all the days we are in the, this world. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. With much love, sincerely, I won't say it, but uh, let's see. I hope to hear your thoughts on this matter, for the Father hath provided with much understanding and bread in these days, a discussion I just had a couple of weeks ago, I always seek understanding concerning our Father's word. As the world falls into darkness, may our Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, keep us having mercy until the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the King of King, Jesus the Christ, King of Kings. Amen. Ah, oh, boy. I, you know, Bob's note here. I couldn't add to that. Um... You know, if you feel compelled to keep a day and honor for the Lord, that's up to you. And, you know, like the Bible says, uh, well, let's take a look. I want to, one more scripture I want to take a look at. Two more, actually. I know I beat this dead horse to death, but uh, I'll beat it again. Someone asked Jesus, what was the most important commandment in the law? Matthew twenty two thirty six, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And... Uh, Hey, Jesus is the Sabbath. And if you love the Lord and every day is the Sabbath, well, that's great. You know? And I love this. Galatians 5, 
verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Somebody send the Hebrew Roots people a memo. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. You know, people, there, there you go. So, um, you know, let everybody, every, let every man be... Um, Oh, I got to find that one. Well, uh, the verse I was looking for, I had to look it up. Romans 14, verse 5. I Sometimes I think I should memorize more scriptures, but uh, I try to be a generalist and know, you know, I am try to know a little bit about the whole Bible. So, you know, I try not to, specialize in any one particular area except for I, pretty much the end time stuff i that's i try i try really hard to specialize in that area but uh i try to know a little bit about everything so sometimes i have to paraphrase stuff because i don't memorize scriptures you know there's only three quarters of a million words you know seven hundred and fifty thousand different words in the bible and to try to remember where all the stuff is is pretty tough. Um, there was a guy I heard. I don't know how true it is. I never met him. There was a guy, supposedly he was with a circus. And he would make uh, a bet with you. You give, you put $20. And if he couldn't tell you, the Bible verse, he would give you $100. So what you would do is you would just pick up a Bible and any verse you wanted in the Bible, through, through 750,000 words, and you could say, okay, I want you to give me um, the book of uh, Nehemiah, chapter 7 and verse 3. He would give you that whole verse. And he would tell you if, if he couldn't do it, he'd give you a hundred bucks. But if, if he could do it, you know, you had to give him the twenty. And for what I understand, he never lost. People couldn't believe it. The guy knew photographic memory. I mean like a computer. But you know what's sad is was he saved? You can know the Word of God, but do you know the God who is the Word? That's important. All right, Romans 14 and verse 5. Paul writes, One man esteemeth one day above another. What does esteem mean? It means to hold in higher regard. One man esteemeth one day above another. You know, like the, the, the Sabbath, right? One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So there you go. Some people uh, think you should keep the Sabbath. Some people think every day is the Sabbath. So you have to make that choice. As the Spirit leads you. So, you know, now that I'm retired, I've been trying to do Bible studies every day. Um, and I really do. I appreciate the, uh, the comments. I really do. And uh, I've been wrong about some things. I was wrong about this NASA stuff. Well, I was half right. But you know what they say about being half right is being half wrong. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. All right, so all blessings, praise, a glory and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, his, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor 
In Jesus' precious name, amen.